Hello, and welcome to another video coverage of This Week on Rails. I'm Dave Kimura, and today we have Voitech bringing us the updates. You can go to world.hey.com forward slash this.week.n.rails to receive the email newsletter. I don't produce a newsletter, I simply provide the video coverage of it. So let's dive right in. For the first item, the Rails Foundation has hired an executive director, and that is Amanda Perino. So I'm really excited to see things moving forward with this effort and I'm really excited to see what's going to come of it in the near future. And for those who don't know, the Rails Foundation is an effort backed by eight different companies to help produce documentation, education, marketing, and events for the Rails ecosystem. And for the next item, Active Job got an update with the Perform All Later to enqueue multiple jobs at once. This will save a round trip to Redis if you're using something like Sidekick, so you can queue up all the jobs at one time. And Sidekick does have this option with something called the push bulk. However, that wasn't exposed into active job. So now active job will be able to leverage that, especially if you're using Sidekick to enqueue multiple jobs at the same time. And for the next item, allow to define the default column serializer. And this is gonna be a change in 7.1. And essentially in the past with Rails, whenever we try to serialize a column, it was using a YAML format by default. And there are other options that you can use like JSON, but each one has their own benefits, but then also some drawbacks. For example, like using the JSON serializer, if there's an unsupported type, then it's just going to insert an empty string instead. And so that could introduce some bugs. However, with Rails 7.1, essentially, if you are going to serialize a column, then you're going to have to decide if you want to use YAML, JSON, or something else it won't default to the YAML as it did before. And next we have the allow mailer classes to customize the deliver later queue name. And this is basically where you have a mailer that's going out and you might have several different mails that you have set up in your application. One of them could be a high volume mailer and you want to throttle that back a bit by reducing the number of workers assigned to it. And so by having a queue that only has a few workers listening on that queue, you can kind of throttle it yourself. And for the next item, allow three tier shared config in the database YAML. And most people probably won't have a need for this. I think it's really going to be reserved for more the complicated applications where you have several different kind of databases that you're working with. Each one might be a little bit different in configuration. And for the next item, add config.host and config.host authorization to new app template. And with Rails 7.1, we got that health check endpoint, the forward slash up URI, for the purposes of load balancers and uptime monitors. So they've had some issues where the DNS rebinding sometimes get in the way of it. And so setting those options will help get rid of some of that friction. So when we create a new Rails application in the production environment, you'll see that we're now getting some commented out options that we can just uncomment if we need to. And the DNS binding protection, it's a security mechanism to prevent a type of attack that can exploit the way web browsers handle network connection. With a DNS rebinding attack, an attacker would basically point a domain name to a harmless IP address, but then later switch it to a malicious IP address. So this would allow an attacker to bypass the same origin policy on your browser which normally prevents the browser from accessing content from different domains. So if you've ever heard the saying, don't click on links and emails from people you don't recognize, you may think that you're being safe and you're not going to fill out anything on that form. You're just curious to see what's in there. But the DNS rebinding attack is real and you could be affected even if you don't perform any actions on that site. Just simply visiting it is enough to potentially have some consequences. And for the next item, we got a minor update to the remove copyright years. And essentially all that is, is an update to the licenses because that's something where people have had to make an effort each year to go in and update the copyright year to the current year. And so that's quite a bit of work for someone to do each year and it's a bit pointless. So this PR just removes all the year dates from the copyright notices, just so we don't have that tech debt each year. And for the last item, we had the add rails application templates to the guides index. We've already had it in the edge guides, the full documentation for the rails application templates, but it wasn't something that was in the index of the guides. 
so it's great that hopefully this will bring more visibility to it. And the Rails application templates is something that I use all the time whenever I'm creating a new application. I have several different templates that I use depending on what I'm doing. For example, not all applications I create adds device, so I have a template to add device into my application. And I also made an application called rubidium.io, which has a bunch of templates that people are able to then create and share with others. It uses that Rails application templates on the back end, and you can simply apply it by passing in that location environment variable. And this is just a cool project because not only can you view the source code of each template that you're going to run, but you can also go back in the history and see any changes that were made from the past. Well, that's all for the changes in this week on Rails. Over the past week, there were 25 contributors to the Rails framework, so I really appreciate everyone's efforts that they have put in helping make the framework better. And I'm also really excited to see what's going to come of the Rails Foundation as it matures a bit and we see more content getting released. Well, that's all for this week's video coverage of This Week on Rails. Thanks for watching.